we are into the age of Aquarius and that's the energy so we got to kind of like blend into this new energy and the age of Aquarius is really like a key time it's really a key time guys because of the fact that the last time that Atlantis was really at its heyday was when we were in Aquarius we were in the age of Aquarius now what is the age of Aquarius the age of Aquarius is basically a, a cycle like there's different cycles it's called like 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 we call them epochs and there's different times when basically um, when the Sun I guess goes into Aries and we go into the spring equinox depending on what constellation the Sun rises in that will tell us the age that we're in so say for instance right now during the spring equinox which is on March the 21st we just had the spring equinox the Sun was in Pisces the Sun was in Pisces so that means that we are still in the age of Pisces but probably in about another 50 60 years from now the uh, Sun is going to rise in Aquarius and Aquarius is going to be the sign that brings in the spring equinox so the Sun is going to spring up in Aquarius and Aquarius so we're, we're not too far from that we're not too far from that and that's going to make the equinox date even shift and people don't notice this type of stuff but the equinox date is going to it's going to shift it's going to eventually the equinox will eventually be in February and that's why you like a lot of the uh, calendar makers and people that make calendars and stuff they're already talking about putting out a new something called a universal calendar because they acknowledge that the Gregorian calendar or Greg's calendar is kind of off I mean this just is what it is or whatever I mean you, you'd be better off using like the Ethiopian calendar or something like that because Greg's calendar is off or whatever so with that people have lost track of time so me myself personally I look at the, the, the constellations and I keep time based off the moon and the constellation because time is based on the planets like I always tell people a month is the moon transiting through the different signs and it takes 29 days for the moon to transit through the different signs which is a month moon month in the term month you see moon like the Sun a year is based upon the Sun going through all the signs of the zodiac and coming back to zero point that's a year so that's how you keep track of time so for me where I'm posting I really don't necessarily need a calendar I just watch the planets so a lot of people ask me well how come you don't um, promote a calendar I mean I'm thinking about promoting one and creating one but I don't really need one because myself personally I just look at the planets because I know what time periods they're measuring is all off of the planets now the Ethiopian calendar and the Jewish calendar is the best calendar to use I mean I'm not knocking that calendar because that calendar is 13 months in that calendar believe it or not it's a hidden month a lot of people don't know about that and um, the Ethiopian and Jewish calendar are very similar and those are that's the calendar that we're supposed to really be using or whatever because that calendar was mapped actually by the uh, Coptics and they're very accurate because they learned from the Egyptians so that calendar even to this day is very very accurate so very if you want to keep time on that level I'm saying on a linear level you know what I'm saying then you would use that particular calendar because calendars judge time on a linear level so that's what you gotta remember below is it's, it's all linear when you're looking at uh, the uh, calendar time and the numbers and stuff like that so let me go ahead and get into this video because I can talk about this stuff for all day or whatever but um so that's what's up as far as the age of Aquarius and why it's so important is because the last time that we were um, that Atlantis was at its heyday was in the time of Aquarius and I'm bringing this up because that's the energy that we're going to go back to we're getting ready to go into a peak of technology into a peak of spirituality and then in technology and spirituality are going to merge science and spirituality are going to merge in the age of Aquarius that's the secret of what happens basically what happens is the doctors will have to begin to learn astrology again the scientists will begin to have to learn astrology again the lawyers will begin to have to learn astrology again I'm gonna do a video about this so I'm not gonna talk too much about it but that's why learning about Aquarius is so important because when like, you're not just looking at Aquarius from a perspective of it being in someone's natal chart and trying to understand them or it being in your natal chart and trying to understand you but you're looking at Aquarius from a perspective of helping to understand this new energy that we're coming in so that's why I kinda waited to this particular time to put out the Aquarius video because I mean Aquarius is, is the theme of the new energy we will be in the age of Aquarius around 2100 according to my calculations that's when we officially get into Aquarius and right now we're in the last few degrees of Pisces so we feel that Aquarius energy we're a lot of people are resonating with it right now 
even though we're still in the age of Pisces, we are still in the time of religion, and people still need something to look up to and follow. I realize that. But we merge it. People are breaking those spells. And then you got the crystals and the indigos that came back, or came from came either back or forward, depending on how you want to look at it, came back from the future to be able to help humanity make the shift. See, that's why we're here, indigos and crystals. We go back to that age of Aquarius, that time. So we know about the merging of science and religion. We, we already know about that. So to us, that's nothing new. That's not anything exciting. And the thing is that we came back to teach that, those indigos that decided to take up that particular mission and task. And you got some indigos that decided not to do anything. You know what I'm saying? They decided not to teach, and that's why a lot of those indigos are suffering, or they decided not to, not necessarily even teach, but because everybody's not going to teach. I mean, I definitely got to point that out, too. I mean, really, it's about art. You know what I'm saying? Aquarius is about the artist revolution and teaching through your example. So everybody's not going to get on YouTube like Ram Hotep and teach. I'm not saying that. That's not what everybody's supposed to do. Some people are going to teach through their drawings. And they're going to teach on what I call a fifth dimensional level, meaning that they're going to create a symbol and teach from that symbol. That's what a lot of people are going to do. So well, what I mean by that is that you may see a symbol, say, for instance, the swastika. The swastika, when you look at it, like they said, pictures worth a thousand words. It may mean this to you, but it may mean that to someone else. So the, the artist or the person that designed that was communicating with you from a fifth dimensional perspective using symbols. That's why the Egyptians use hieroglyphs and stuff like that, because that's the new teaching. So you have artists that are going to teach through symbols. Some people will teach through music and melody and tonation, and they will teach lessons through that. So there's a lot of different teachers and ways to teach the arts. You don't you don't have to necessarily talk like Ram Hotel. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that's probably one of the least effective ways, believe it or not, to affect change. A person sitting up there talking is not as much of a threat as a person that can change the world with a symbol. See, that person has a threat. A person that can just create a symbol and people look at it and just be like, I'm changing my life. Just from looking at that symbol. That's a real now that's the person that's a threat. Anybody can get up here and talk. You know what I'm saying? A waste a lot of energy doing that, but I'll feel like my mission is complete when I see people creating symbols and they change the world just with that. Or they put out a song and they change the world with that. See, that's the real revolution or the real way to affect change. That's the real Star Seed Renaissance. So as far as Aquarius, to understand it on an individual level, uh, Aquarius is the sign of brotherhood and sisterhood. It's the sign of fraternity. It's the sign of fraternal orders. Aquarius rules like when people come together for a humanitarian cause or for the higher good of humans so it's not like Pisces Pisces rules when people come together from a religious spiritual perspective Aquarius deals with when people come together from a intellectual humanitarian perspective and spirituality is still involved in that because Aquarius bears a picture of water and water represents spirituality but spirituality is not necessarily the theme of Aquarius. Aquarius is about being an intellect. They're intellects. Now Aquarius, they make really good friends. Really good friends. It's the sign of friendship. So most Aquariuses, they have a lot of friends. And if you're wondering, well, who are Aquariuses? Aquariuses are born from February the 16th through uh, March. February the 16th through March the 9th, I believe. And that's the uh, sign of Aquarius or whatever. It's, it's about 24 days. So. So it's February the 16th to about March the 9th. So anybody born within that time period is in actuality an Aquarius. And I know, I know a lot of people believe that that's the time of Pisces. But according to the new Zodiac that was, you know, put out by the scientists, this is now the time of Aquarius or whatever. So those those particular dates. So these, these people make really good friends. I mean, a person that's not really good at meeting friends and making friends, if you meet you one Aquarius, I guarantee you by the end of the day, You'll have a gang of friends because Aquarius is going to hook you up with this person, introduce you to that person. They're all about networking. That's what they're all about. They don't know how to be lonely. Aquarius is still, they don't know how to be lonely. They just constantly keep making friends. Um, they enjoy debating. Like I was saying, they're intellects. So Aquarius is, they, en they enjoy a good mental fight. And they don't have a lot of tolerance for people that um, can't comprehend them and people that don't really understand them on an intellectual level. See, Aquariuses are concerned with you understanding them on an intellectual level. That's all they really care about. If you don't, if they feel like a person can't really comprehend their level and the way they talk and the way they act, because they're very eccentric. 
you got to remember Aquarius is a very misunderstood sign in our day and time because and I know I'm kind of bouncing around here but bear with me but Aquarius is a, a very misunderstood sign in this day and time because of the fact that we know we, we know very little about its ruler see the ruler of Aquarius is Uranus and Uranus uh, was discovered in the late 1700s around the time when this country was uh, founded the the, uh, the Americas was founded so we don't know a lot about Uranus as far as in this particular time we've lost the knowledge like I was just talking about how we only use 10% of our brain so we've lost a lot of the knowledge we don't remember things but don't think that Uranus was not discovered by the Atlanteans and I have proof of this and the proof is because you can find writings about Uranus amongst the ancients of Peru amongst the Aztecs even they talk about Uranus and they charted Uranus moving through the solar system way before I'm talking 12,000 BC way before I'm talking about way before we knew anything about Uranus you find there are writings with where the Aztecs especially the, the Peruvians charted Uranus and I'm pointing that out because they got their information from Atlanteans the Atlanteans that's where the Peruvians actually Peru was settled by ex-Atlanteans that moved into Peru because they knew Atlantis was falling so they took a lot of their literature and their writings into Peru so that's how that got there so Aquarius was overstood by the Atlanteans that was like their main sign and they understood that sign to a point like so they based their whole culture off of that off the off of the sign of Aquarius or whatever so that's why like a lot of Aquarians are misunderstood in this day and time getting back to my point is because of the fact that and a lot of people don't understand them intellectually is because of the fact that they're they really weren't defined in our culture Aquarius aren't really defined in our culture they're defined in Atlantis so you have to go back to Atlantis to understand Aquarius. You got to study about star, star seeds and indigos and crystal churches and rainbows and stuff like that to really understand an Aquarius. So now Aquarius, um, they can come off as arrogant. They can come off as arrogant because they're not arrogant though. That's the thing. But well, depending on the, the perspective of how you see it. But just like some people feel like Leos are arrogant. See, Aquarius and Leos are opposites. So I'm a Leo, and then there's Aquarius. So I definitely resonate with Aquarius. I mean, even though we're opposites, like they say, like attracts like. And opposites attract so even though we're opposites we have a lot of similarities we have a lot of likenesses and um, Leo's are called arrogant and cocky just like Aquarius is but Aquarius cockiness comes from a sense of intellectual uh, arrogance and snobbery <laughs> and Leo's uh, cockiness comes from a sense of figuring out things and being create ultimately creative and being able to think their way out of anything and being so super independent to where they don't really need people and all of that type of stuff so that's where their arrogance comes in that totally big difference but the same at the same time so Aquarius says they come off as arrogant um, and it's really not their arrogant they just hate hypocrisy they hate ignorance so like if say for instance they see something that's unjust or foolish or stupid they're gonna talk bad about that like Aquarius is not gonna let that stand down like Aquarius is are your rev they're your real revolutionaries not Leo's really like really Aquarius is are they're the real radicals as far as on an intellectual level because they're going to keep pushing and pushing but remember it's intellectual more so though whereas Leo deals with more warfare because Leo is based on the cat and cats are warriors cats are soldiers that's why the Egyptians kept cats on their grounds because cats protected the ground and the land believe it or not people said no dogs protect the ground Ram Hotel what the hell are you talking about some damn cats that sounds like some feminine shit. <laughs> nah, brother. <laughs> it's not that it's feminine. It's the fact that the Egyptians were smart and they used the feminine principle as their protection. Because I've experienced this. I had some uh, land at one time that cats were on. Like I was living on some land and that cats patrolled this particular land. And every time something was going to happen or somebody was coming on the land, like a foreigner or something that wasn't that didn't belong there, because I was living on the land, so the cats accepted me as a person that lived there. So every time someone like a foreigner or somebody would come, the cats would come to me. And they would like come up to me or whatever and basically, you know, make a noise or something. And shortly after, it'll be somebody causing some shit or some drama coming on that land. And the cats would always warn me. But not in a way like a dog. See, that's why people say, well, cats can't protect you because cats are smarter than dogs. Dogs are going to warn you when they hear it. When you hear it too, probably. And then they're going to start barking. And then they're going to throw you off. A cat is going to be quiet and they're going to warn you at least three or four or five minutes before the actual uh, intruder gets a chance to engage you. So that's the difference or whatever. Like a Leo is more so style like a cat and a warrior, a sneaky warrior, like a ninja. And Aquarius is a warrior too, but on an intellectual level. And don't get it twisted. They will go to war with your ass on a mental level. 
Aquarius will they will fight you on a mental level though. They're strategists. Like you have a lot of lawyers that are Aquariuses. And lawyers will fight you. They just do it on a mental level, on an intellectual level. So that's you know like why a lot of Aquariuses are called arrogant. Now you have um, Aquariuses, they don't mind working in a group. They're all about freedom, but at the same time, they are about groups and, and people coming together and working together. So they understand co-ops and stuff like that. Aquariuses, they rule co-ops and cooperatives and stuff like that. They totally understand that and they totally understand how to work within that um, type of energy. Um, now the Aquariuses have a natural gift for technology. Most of your Aquariuses, you're going to always see them playing with their phones and their iPads. And, I mean, they got it all. You know what I'm saying? They got a laptop at home three full flat screen TVs, they're all in technology or whatever and they probably understand the programs on a the computer. They totally understand things and know how to break down things. Like they're scientists. So I mean they go into the root of things on an intellectual level and they understand things. They can program computers and so they're very technical like a Virgo in a way. They're analytical too. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is is that um, they have a little bit more intellectual staying power than a Virgo. What I mean by that is that they can concentrate just a little bit longer because they're not mutable they're fixed Virgos are mutable so Virgos will bounce from one subject to the next whereas an Aquarius is like okay I'm gonna take this computer apart and learn it all the components of it and put it back together and I'm not gonna rest until I do that that's the Aquarius type of uh, energy and um, last but not least the compatibilities of Aquarius Aquarius is compatible with uh, fire signs like other fire signs like Leo's, Aries, Sagittarius, and then air signs like Libra and um, Gemini. So this is the uh, compatibilities of Aquarius. And I myself personally, I really, I know my, my twin flame is, is an Aquarius. I mean, I'm not sure, you know what I'm saying? I'm just throwing it out there, but I just really feel like it is. And like my favorite musician out there, actually, she's an Aquarius. And I, I love, I love me some Erica Badu. Like seriously, like she's an Aquarius, and I'm like I resonate with her. My twin flame has to be something like her, and she. I know she thinks she's a Pisces, and a lot of people are like, Nah, Erica Badu's a Pisces. I know we got a lot of Erica Badu fans out there. She probably get mad at me. Don't get mad at me, Erica. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. Um, it's I really believe you're an Aquarius. I really believe Erica Badu is an Aquarius, and um, but I mean I'm just attracted to Aquarius. Aquarius women are wonderful, man. They're beautiful usually and the thing is they're not really like the type of women like they're not caught up on their body like that because Aquarius are detached could because they're ruled by Uranus so they're out of their body actually their consciousness exists outside of their body so they they can leave their body easily like they understand astral travel and all that type of stuff too clear audience now they have a lot of spiritual gifts too just because their intellects doesn't mean they're not smart that's what makes them so smart is the fact that they can learn from just the air they can just hear the answers to a test or they could just hear something about a person and know that that person ain't right. So they still got clear audience skills and strong intuition. But the Aquarius women usually are beautiful with great features and all of that. I mean, I'm serious. Like, if you really just start looking at because I'm into, like, medical astrology, too. You start looking at different signs create beautiful. Some signs create more superior beings than others as far as beauty is concerned. I mean, just like Libra women are beautiful. Aquarius women are beautiful, too. But the difference is that, like, I like Libras, but I really like some Aquarius, too. And the difference is because the Aquarius is not caught up on her physical body as much. To me, that's what I've observed. I mean, they'd be beautiful, too. That's the thing. And they could easily be caught up into it. You know what I'm saying? But they're not even caught up into that. Like, their thing is just more like, man, about intellectual capabilities. And they want a smart brother and stuff like that. So that's why I feel like, ultimately, I'm more, I'm definitely more attracted to an Aquarius or whatever. So I'm definitely going to put that on my wish list as my soulmate can be an Aquarius, hopefully. But... Not to say, you know, that's ruling out anybody else. I'm just, this is just Ron Hotel, kind of like helping people to understand the signs, but at the same time, kind of just fantasize. Because I really like Erica Badu. And I'm just hoping that, you know, the woman for me is like that, man. Because, and that's that Aquarius energy. So, but yeah, Aquarius is a great sign. Um, I 